What's up, my friends? We're going to start a new drawing today based on the artwork of the artist that we just looked at, that American painter named Jasper John. So before we get into the drawing, let's begin, put our first things first, begin with a little bit of conversation. So please, let's start by repeating these words after me. Line, shape, color, texture, form, space, value. So throughout this drawing, we're going to be working with lines. We're going to use those lines to create shapes. Uh, once we have all of our lines and shapes created, we're going to use some color to help us fill all of the space on our page. And in that color, we're going to make sure that we use three layers of value. That's one, two, three. We're going to start by filling a shape with a light value. Then we're going to do a second layer over the top of that of a mid-tone value that goes about halfway across. And then lastly, we'll do a layer of dark value that covers about half of our mid-tone. That being said, let's keep our conversation moving. Moving us right along to our seven principles of design. Again, please repeat these words after me. Balance, unity, pattern, rhythm, movement, emphasis, contrast. So in this drawing, we are going to create some balance because of the way that we use our colors. We are absolutely going to be creating some pattern. Um, and we should, because of, again, because of the way we use our color triads, we should create some contrast between uh, the foreground and background of this piece. So that being said, Quick and easy on that one. We've got a couple other vocabulary terms we want to touch on real quick before we get going. So let's go ahead and do that, and then let's get into the drawing. All right, so we got three things that we're going to talk about. First being media. So bear in mind, media are the things that we can write with, draw with, or color with. If we cannot do any of those things with it, then it is not media. In this drawing, we're going to start off with a pencil. That's our first media. And we will finish up... If you're in the room with me, we'll finish up with crayons. If you're at home, finish up with color pencils or you know whatever you happen to have available. Which brings us to this word, tool. Tools are the things that we use to make art that we cannot write, draw, or color with. Uh, so for example, your eraser is probably the most common tool that we use in the art room. Um, with this piece, we are also gonna be using a stencil. Um, your stencil might look like this, your stencil might look differently than this, but we're gonna be using a rectangle shaped stencil to create this drawing, or to create the first step of this drawing. Rather. The next thing is just a quick review of our color theory groups, our triads of colors. So remember that a triad starts with T-R-I. It has, each group will have three colors in it. So our primary triad is red, yellow, and blue. These are all the colors. We cannot make these colors. We cannot mix these. We have to start with them. Then we have our secondary, which are green, orange, and purple. These are the colors that we make by mixing our primary colors. We have our warm triad, which is red, yellow, and orange. And we have our cool triad, which is blue, green, and purple. So that being said, just a quick review of those things. Let's go ahead and get over to a blank piece of paper. Let's get into this drawing. So here I have my blank piece of paper. Now, we're going to be working from one of Jasper John's flag paintings where he's stacked and layered these American flags on top of each other. So we want to start with our paper in front of us in landscape. We want to start off with this tool, our stencil, this very simple stencil. We want to place it as close to the middle as we can, and then we want to trace around it. Okay. So with drawing, we're, for now we are gonna have two flags. For today, we're gonna focus just on this front flag, this one that is in the foreground and in front of everything. So the first thing we wanna lay out is that field where the stars will go. So that just takes a square or rectangle up in the corner. And then we wanna add our stripes. So when we look at this flag right over there, how many stripes do we see? That's right, we see 13. To create 13 stripes, we draw 12 lines. So if it helps you to turn your paper to do this, do so. 
But we just want to make sure if you if you want to use a straight edge for this, use that tool. You know, if you want to use one of these, go for it. You're welcome to it. You can make one on your own, or you can use one. Or if I have some with me, you're welcome to use one of mine. Or we can just freehand it. It's whatever you are more comfortable with. But we're going to create 12 of these lines. So here, let me double count. So we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 stripes. So again, how many stars should be in this field of stars? That's right, 50. Now, chances are we probably don't have room to draw 50 stars there. So we're going to draw as many as we can fit. And if it's, if it's 50, that's awesome. If it's less than 50, we're not going to beat ourselves up about that. Now, another thing I want to mention to you when we do this part we do not have to use a star shape. If you want to use that shape, you're welcome to do so. But I'm going to use circles for my stars because they are a little bit easier to deal with when we're talking about coloring something with a crayon. It's, it just makes the whole process a little bit easier for us as the artist. There's no sense in creating stress for ourselves that is not necessary. So at this point, we're done with this first stage of the drawing. Here's where we want to choose our first triad. It can be primary, secondary, warm, cool, your choice as the artist. But the big thing that we, I want to discuss with you for a second is that when we look at the flag again, over there, how many colors do we see in the stripes for that pattern? Yes, we see two colors. And then we see our third color in the field. So notice that the one of the stripes and the stars are the same color. So when we do this, we want to make sure that we're only using two of the colors in our triad for the stripes and that we use one of those colors and our third color for the stars. Now before we go any further, real quick, I'm going to, I think I'm going to do a, do I have a green? Somewhere, maybe, possibly, I do have a green. So I'm going to do a cool, I'm going to start off with a cool triad on mine. Um, so what I want you to see is real quick, I'm just going to demonstrate for you how to lay out these values. And then I'll turn you guys loose to work on your own. Okay, so again, we want to start off filling the whole shape really lightly, really, really gently. Try to always color in the same direction. That's why I turned my paper because it's easier for me to color this stripe going this way than it is for me to color it going this way. You know, when we can make things easier on ourselves, nothing wrong with that. But really, really light value, just not even really pressing down, just kind of touching the paper, letting it go. So then I'm going to come over with another layer, and I'm going to cover half of this with a mid-tone, where I'm coloring and pressing down just a little bit harder. Not super hard, but just a little bit harder. And I'm gonna do one more layer where I cover half of this mid-tone with a dark tone, where I'm pressing down pretty hard at this point. I might even add an extra dark tone. But this is what we're looking for, is this transition from light to mid to dark. Um, so, you can go ahead and choose your triad, get to work on this part. And one thing I want to remind you, or just mention, is that the values don't always have to come from the same direction. So my plan here is I'm going to have all my purple stripes with the light on the right-hand side, and I'm going to do my green stripes with the light value on the left-hand side. Um, that's going to help to create a little bit more of that contrast, a little bit more variation, make the drawing hopefully, hopefully, a little bit more interesting to look at. So I'm going to go ahead and knock out my first flag. You guys go ahead and knock out your first flag. We'll come back and discuss and move on to the next step when we're ready. All right, so this is our first flag finished. I've got two colors in my stripe pattern. I've got all my values going different ways to create this little bit of visual interest and contrast. Uh, I've got my field of stars done. We're ready to move into our second flag, which will go in the background. Now with this one, we have to be really, really careful as we draw because we have to make sure that our lines from the back flag do not match up with the front flag. So we're going to start with the field of stars. So we want to find this first one and go from the middle of it up 
and from the middle of that one over. And then we're going to proceed to create again our 12 lines, which will make our 13 stripes. So we go one, two. Now when we get to here, inside of this, we want to make sure we're offsetting all of these lines so that none of our background lines line up to our foreground lines. It's one, two, three, four. Five, continue, skip over. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Now I realize there that some of my lines got a little bit thicker than others. That's okay. We're not going to worry about that. Um, back up and back up. Just a second. When you do the stars here, don't worry about trying to put these three layers of values on those stars. Those shapes are going to be way too small to do that. It's totally fine to do what I did, which is just go in and put a dark value on all of them. Um, come back into this field. Same thing. We're going to create our stars. And then when we are finished with this and we're ready for color selection, this is what I want you to do. We're gonna use the opposite triad. So for example, I used a cool triad of colors in my first flag. So I will use a warm triad of colors in my background. If I had used a warm on my first flag, it would be a cool in my background. If you used a primary triad on the first flag, we'll use a secondary triad in the background. And if you used a secondary triad in the first flag, we will use a primary triad in the background. That way, that's gonna, what's going to help to create our contrast because we're going to have separate groups of colors, which will, one, help us to create some contrast, but two, and this one is equally important, it will help to create separation between these two flags. If the background flag has the same colors in it as the foreground flag, Everything's just gonna kind of mush together. It's gonna be very difficult to tell which one is which. We don't want that to happen. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my, I said warm triad. Misplaced, there's a yellow. And here's an orange. So I'm gonna go ahead and take these and put them to purpose in my background. And there, my friends, we have our finished, completed version of our Jasper Johns painting done as drawing. Now, again, or not again, but let me mention that I understand that yellow is a very difficult color to show these three layers of value with. So if you feel like you're struggling with it, don't feel bad. You are not alone. It is a, a tough color. The best thing that you can do to make the yellow work better is to go extra light on your light value. Go way lighter than you think it needs to be. Um, but at this point, we've created pattern in the flag. We've created contrast between the front flag and the back flag by using opposite opposing triads. We've created lots of value that create a really interesting look to the surface because oh, because I chose to have my values going in opposite direction, it almost creates a an almost metallic look to it, kind of a shiny look. Um, your values can go in whatever directions you want. That's totally up to you. Um, we've used all of the space. We've got our color theory, our triads. Again, I chose to use the cool and the warm. You can do the cool and the warm. You can do the warm and the cool. You primary, secondary, it's up to you. But this is a finished drawing, my friends. Congratulations, and as always, my friends, happy arting, guys.